Hey everyone, welcome to the Juniper Links Accounting channel. My name is Caroline and today we're going to look at how to pay yourself dividends. So I'm going to explain everything you need to know about declaring a dividend from your own limited company in detail and also make sure you have enough money in there as profit in order to declare these dividends. So without further delay, let's get started with the video. So first let's go over what are dividends exactly. And these are income from investment, such as holding shares in a company. And that's exactly what you would be doing as the single director and shareholder of your own limited company. Dividends are taxed a little differently to earned income. And what I mean by earned income, these would be things like salary, self-employed income, and income from regular property rentals. So like a buy to let that you run yourself. And all of these are just regular earned income throughout the year. However, dividends, because they're a form of investment income, they do have different tax rates and thresholds, which I will get into later in the video. And the interesting thing with dividends is that they can only be paid to shareholders from the distributable profits or distributable reserves in the company. And this is a very important point because it could get you into some trouble later on if you are not careful. So again, I'm going to explain all of this a little bit later in the video. So when can you actually take a dividend? And the best practice and what HMRC likes as well is to take quarterly dividends. So dividends every three months, you just take a lump sum from the company based on what's available in there. Um, and that's your payment and that's it. It is possible to take monthly dividends, but be sure to separate the transfers out uh, from things like salary because you don't want HMRC to look into your records and decide that everything should be taxed the same as salary. Of course, you're going to need to keep certain records when you issue a dividend, which I'll get into as well. The company absolutely must have enough available profit in there after tax. So you need to factor in what corporation tax would be payable on the profit so far. Make sure that that amount is taken out of the total available profit in the company. If there are more shareholders in the company, you'll need to make sure that you're paying out dividends according to the share structure. So if everyone has an ordinary one pound share and there are two of you in the company as shareholders, then essentially you'd be paying out 50% to each person. So if you wanted to take a 10,000 pound dividend for yourself, your partner would also receive a £10,000 dividend. And if you want to amend the share structure, it is possible, but I recommend consulting a legal service to do that. So let's get into calculating profit and distributable reserves for a limited company. And before I'm even gonna start getting into this, I want to mention this point here. Having accounting software and help from an accountant is highly, highly recommended in this circumstance because you are going to have a much easier time making sure that you're taking out the right amount from your business. And common accounting software that we use would be Free Agent. It's the easiest one for a UK limited company because it's specifically designed for UK companies. All their alternatives are things like Xero and QuickBooks and ClearBooks. Most of them have a free trial, so have a look at them because doing this in a spreadsheet yourself, you'll either need a lot of accounting knowledge or you'll need to spend a lot of time learning exactly how these things are calculated. But as a general overview, the first thing you would want to do is to calculate the company's profit and loss so far for the year. And when I mention the year, I'm referring to the company's year end date, not the tax year. So the tax year runs the 6th of April to the following 5th of April. We want to know what the company's profit is for its accounting period, not necessarily the tax year as a whole. For example, if your company was incorporated in May of 2020, then its year end date would be May 2021. And then it would continue from there as the 1st of June 2021 to the 31st of May 2022. That's generally how company year end dates work. Um, and if you're not sure what your company's year end date is, then feel free to check Companies House. If you type in Companies House Beta into a Google search, you'll be able to find their records and you can type in your company name or number in the search box and then find your company details that way. So once you've worked out the company's profit so far for the year, you'd want to deduct the corporation tax liability based on that level of profit. And corporation tax is currently 19%. So we want to calculate 19% of the profit figure and then deduct that. The next deduction we want to make would be any dividends that you've already taken. Again, the already taken part 
refers to the current company accounting period, not the tax year, because we need to know the company's financial position when paying out dividends. And the final thing you would need to do is to carry forward any profit or loss from previous years. And this is a very important step because if your company made a significant loss in a previous year, but this year it was doing much better, you'd still have to carry forward that loss into the current period to see the company's overall financial position. And these are all accounting terminologies that you may or may not be aware of. And if you are struggling with this kind of thing, then I strongly recommend finding an accountant that can help you. We do have an accountancy service for single director limited companies or like a partner company where there's two of you in there. And it's generally providing things like consultancy services. So if you do need help, feel free to reach out to us. So let's look at a very simplified example. I'm not going to go into any of the balance sheet figures, which would include things like your business account balance, your trade debtors, uh, if you have any other liabilities outstanding. So we're just going to look at purely profit and loss, assuming that your company has no other debts to pay um, and that it's been paid for all of its invoices. So let's look at this calculation here. And you'll notice on the left side, which is where we'll be focusing first, you'll notice the company's turnover figure so far for the year is £25,497. So the amounts aren't as important in this case, it's more to do with the method of calculation. And let's say the company's accounting period started on 1st of May 2021. So this is everything that's happened since the 1st of May 2021. And Anything beforehand would have been carried forward to this current year. Um, and I am going to say that there were no carried forward balances from the previous year. It was just a zero figure, so the company made exactly no extra money. <laughs> so, so far it's made £25,497 in turnover. It had software costs of £568 that we need to deduct. So all of these are deductions. Accountancy fees of 750, travel and subsistence of 142, and equipment expense of 642. So, again, the figures are not as important in this case. We're just looking at the method of calculation. So, once we subtract all of these amounts from the turnover, we get a profit figure of 23,395 pounds. And now, what we want to do is move over to the right hand side over here. So, we have the same exact profit figure as before. And this time we are subtracting the corporation tax liability on that profit. And that's just 19%. We are also subtracting dividends that you've already taken from the company, which totaled £10,000 since the 1st of May 2021. So what's left over after those things have been deducted are the distributable reserves in the business bank account or in the company that you can legitimately take as dividends. If there are other liabilities, then you have to be aware of those and make sure that's factored into the total available reserves. So if there's a carried forward amount from last year, if there are any trade debtors, for example, your invoices are still unpaid, you might not physically have this money yet to pay yourself. So just keep those things in mind. But essentially, if you don't take any more money than this from your company, providing that you have factored in all expenses and all invoices for the period, then you would not overdraw from the business. The company would still be able to cover its corporation tax liability and pay you this extra money without any issues. And that's essentially how it works as a very, very broken down, simple calculation. Uh, it doesn't always work out this way in reality. So for example, if this distributable figure was a negative 8,900, it means that your company definitely doesn't have any money left in there to pay you a dividend. So you can't legitimately issue any dividends. And I'll get into why in a minute. But before that, let's get into the dividend tax rates for 2021-22. So this is the current tax year we're in now. There is a dividend allowance of £2,000 with no tax. Then any further dividends will be taxed in the appropriate rate based on your other earned income. So earned income is always added to the calculation first. So things like salary, self-employment income, income from rental properties. So once those have been factored into the calculation, then the dividends are added on top to work out the appropriate tax rate. So lower rate threshold, we have 7.5% dividend tax. And that goes up to £50,270 total income. Higher rate threshold is 32.5% 
dividend tax and that would go up to £150,000 total income. Keep in mind that if your income does exceed £100,000, you start losing your personal allowance as well. The additional rate threshold has tax of 38.1%, and that is on anything above £150,000. So these are all for dividend earnings. And some notes at the bottom here. Dividends are not taxed at source and will need to be reported on a self-assessment return each year. So if you have been receiving dividends and haven't applied for self-assessment yet, you will likely need to do so. And it's definitely not recommended to leave your dividend tax in the company bank account. What we always recommend is to take the dividends first, then calculate the tax on that personally and set that tax money aside in a personal bank account to make sure that this doesn't happen. Um, and if you have an accountant, they'll often recommend this too as well. So what if you overdraw from the company, and this is something I've touched on a couple times during the video so far, uh, these become unlawful dividends when there's no available profit. Essentially, it means your company legitimately had no available money to pay you these dividends. It needed all of the money for its own liabilities or just simply had a, a loss during the year, so the money physically didn't exist. And what would happen is that these unlawful dividends, when you're also the director, would be converted into a director's loan. Now, if the director's loan isn't repaid by the corporation tax deadline, so you don't repay the money to your company that you overdrew, then HMRC would request a corporation tax deposit of 32.5% on the loan value. Um, and they're essentially taking this as dividend tax in the higher rate. It's exactly the same percentage, um, but you can get this back later, but there is a deadline as to how long you can wait to repay the loan and reclaim this money from HMRC. If you don't pay back your company in time, then HMRC will simply keep the money. There's also the risk that if HMRC suspects that the director was negligent, and that is why the company couldn't afford to pay its tax liabilities, then they could come after them personally for company taxes. If you're using an accountancy software, you want to make sure that it's fully up to date before you take any dividends from the company, um, because if you miss something and later on you find out that you couldn't actually distribute that level of dividends it could cause problems with paying tax and things like that so you want to be careful and make sure everything is accounted for moving on to the good stuff how to actually pay a dividend from your limited company so essentially once you've checked the distributable reserves in the company so if you're using accounting software and you've updated everything and it's telling you you can take x amount of dividends um and you're 100% you're sure it's up to date, <laughs> you've even had an accountant help you check that it's right, then you can set up a transfer to the shareholder or shareholders from the business bank account and clearly label this transfer as a dividend payment. However, before you actually transfer the money to yourself, there are some record keeping requirements when paying dividends. So essentially HMRC wants you to keep a minutes book to show the board meeting each time you distribute a dividend. So this is a meeting between the directors. They get to decide how many dividends to distribute to the shareholders based on the profit that the company is making. Then what they would need to do is issue a dividend voucher to show the date and the value of the company that it's been paid from. Uh, I've actually included the link in the description with more details of what the voucher should include. Um, however, accounting software often does help you generate a dividend voucher based on the dividend payment that you transferred out from the company. So if it's just yourself, it can kind of help you cover the dividend voucher aspect. The minutes book still technically needs to be kept, but often the dividend voucher also has a minutes book entry on there. So it kind of covers both aspects of the reporting requirements. And these things don't need to actually be submitted anywhere. However, the dividend voucher should be sent to the recipient of the dividend. And the company should also keep a copy for its own records. And like I said, there are some links in the description below to help you with these things. So there's a general help page to show the tax on dividends for the current year. There's a link to the gov.uk website, which explains who needs to submit a tax return. There's also a link that outlines running a limited company and taking money out of a limited company that mentions some of the things with regards to unlawful dividends and making sure there's enough profit in the company before you take a dividend. And we also have our very own guide to director's loans. 
And just a quick note, this video is not financial advice and it's for informational purposes only. The tax rates and allowances are always subject to change based on what the government is doing for the year. And we recommend seeking professional help when you are running your own limited company just because the reporting requirements can be a little bit more complex compared to something like a sole trader. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then feel free to click that thumbs up button to let us know that we did a good job. And if you're interested in more content like this, then do consider subscribing to the channel and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you can get notified every time we upload a new video. And if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching and I hope you guys have an amazing day.